Hey guys, today I'll show you a zombie horror TV series named Black Summer Season 1. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The drama begins with a shot of the world at the onset of a zombie apocalypse in the United States, where an unknown zombie virus infected every citizen and lurked within their bodies. After their death, they would transform into a zombie. The government was paralyzed by the virus outbreak, and the disease control center and National Guard abandoned treatment in succession. No one knew how to deal with this virus, and even the methods to effectively eliminate zombies were unclear. The military could only clear areas with brute force and establish mandatory quarantine zones. Life for a group of ordinary citizens had reached a point where there was no water, no electricity, and no food supply. If people wanted to survive in a city surrounded by zombies, they had to flee to safety zones under military control. Ever since the outbreak of the zombie wave, Rose lived in a town designated as a mandatory evacuation area. There were no living people to be seen on the streets. All survivors hid in their homes, waiting for rescue. One morning, the U.S. Army came for the rescue. They were to take the survivors to a military safe point, a sports stadium in the city center. Despite the sharp decline in the town's population, Rose's family of three packed their bags and ran towards the quarantine gate. Due to the need to queue, the army only had three trucks for transportation. Coupled with the zombies' sudden appearances, only a very few could actually be rescued. That's where Rose's family ran into trouble. Her daughter was put on a truck, but Rose and her husband were stopped because her husband looked ill and was sweating profusely. The soldier in charge of checking noticed he had a wound on his abdomen, a clear sign of virus infection. If it gets worse, he could turn into a zombie, endangering everyone on the truck. The truck immediately left without waiting for others, causing chaos among the crowd. As an Air Force flew overhead to clear the zombies, Rose and her husband had to take shelter in an empty house to avoid being accidentally injured. They cowered on the floor, trembling. After the air raid, her husband was barely alive, seemingly with worsening symptoms. But with all medical facilities in town paralyzed, there was nowhere to seek treatment. Rose could only get some water for him. While she was searching the kitchen, she heard a noise outside. Gathering her courage, she took a knife and went out to see. She found an elderly woman with reduced mobility left alone in the empty house. But when she returned to the living room after hearing another noise, she saw a pool of blood on the floor. Just as she was wondering where it came from, her husband, now turned into a zombie, pounced on her. She quickly dodged into a room and locked the door. The elderly neighbor wasn't so lucky. With her door wide open and nowhere to hide, she was gruesomely devoured by Rose's zombified husband. However, after her death, she too became a zombie and moved swiftly. Rose seized an opportunity to run outside, but she ran into a dead end, almost becoming food for the zombies. Just then, a man dressed in military uniform rushed over and shot the zombie dead. Since the zombie virus had just broken out, people didn't know about the zombie's weakness. This man accidentally shot the zombie in the head, killing it completely. However, his real identity was not a soldier, but a criminal named Spears. It's revealed that he was arrested for knowing some secret and was temporarily detained in a house, guarded by a single soldier. Spears initially tried to bribe the soldier, but it didn't work. He then claimed he needed to use the bathroom for his smelly business. The soldier became impatient with his many requests, letting his guard down for a moment. Spears seized the opportunity, overpowered the soldier, took his gun, and shot him in the head. He then put on the army uniform and pretended to be a soldier wandering the streets. By chance, he met Rose, rescuing her from the zombie attack, and they teamed up. On the other side of town, a young couple was involved in a car accident. The woman was severely bleeding at the scene. Her boyfriend initially wanted to save her, but seeing the signs of her turning into a zombie, he was forced to flee in panic. A mute guy named Ryan happened to pass by and witness the accident. He approached to assess the situation, but he was bewildered and didn't know what to do. At that moment, a girl named Sun grabbed him and they took off running. Not long after their frantic escape, the woman from the car accident died due to excessive blood loss. However, because of the infection, she was reborn as a zombie who fed on humans and their smelly parts. She chased after passers-by by tracing their smell. Two bystanders engrossed in studying a map were caught unaware. One of them was knocked down, and the other, a chubby guy named Lance, was so terrified that he left his companion and ran for his chubby life. Meanwhile, Sun and Ryan stumbled upon this scene. Without a second thought, they turned and ran, looking for a vacant house to take refuge in. But when they finally managed to open the door of a house, they found people inside who seized the opportunity to rob them. They were held at gunpoint by a family of four. 
Sun quickly apologized and turned to leave with Ryan. At the same time, a private car was driving on the street. A woman named Barbara was inside, studying a map and planning her route to the stadium for refuge. A man approached her seeking help. He was very persuasive, saying that the road ahead is dangerous and people can be cruel. Besides the zombies, there are people who would rob her of her gasoline and he happens to know the way to the stadium, so he proposed that they could team up with each other. Barbara was convinced and let the man into the driver's seat. But as soon as the car door opened, the man turned hostile and demanded that she get out. Before he could drive away, another burly man named William dragged him out of the car and beat him up. Barbara quickly climbed into the back seat of the car. Meanwhile, Son, Ryan, and others had been running for what felt like forever. They finally found the main group and saw the checkpoint of the quarantine station. But the evacuation operation was over. The checkpoint was closed off with barbed wire, and the remaining army personnel were standing guard at the entrance, persuading the survivors to fend for themselves. They weren't letting anyone through, which sparked outrage among the crowd. Everyone shoved forward, and in the ensuing chaos, a gap was made in the wire. Sun was the first to crawl through, and then the army's defense collapsed. Everyone rushed through the wire and ran with all their might down the streets. William had just finished beating the man up when he saw a large group coming to steal the car. He quickly got in, shut the door, and took off in a cloud of dust with Sun and Barbara, who had just climbed in. His hand was stained with blood and his knuckles ached slightly. However, seeing Sun eyeing him warily, he quickly assured her that he wasn't a bad guy despite his tough muscles. He explained that he had taken the car midway just to survive and reunite with his family. He then shared his precious water resources with the two women in the car. Barbara let her guard down, claiming that she also had a family and that she wasn't a burden because she had money. She showed them an expensive gold chain on her arm, but money was useless now, unable to even buy resources. William asked them if they had a gun. Both expressed their dismay as they didn't. That's when they saw an abandoned truck on the street. It was the army's rescue vehicle. The fact that it was empty meant it had been attacked by zombies midway. It turned out that even with soldiers' protection, it wasn't safe. They had no time to chat and focused on studying the map to try to get to the stadium for refuge as quickly as possible. But a black car had them in its sights, wanting to steal the gasoline in their car and drove alongside them. William had worked in this area before, so he was confident that he knew the road conditions well. To shake off the black car, he ignored the correct route pointed out by Sun and drove into a street block. Unbeknownst to them, they encountered two lunatics who were throwing things at the car. They quickly drove away, but the street was cluttered with debris, and the car wheel got stuck on a bicycle. They had to find a deserted place to stop and pull out the bike. At this point, a zombie came running from behind and climbed onto the roof of the car, trying to slip in through the window. Sun immediately took out a hammer to attack the zombie. The moment the zombie fell off, William continued driving and hit it. This was the first time they had fought with a zombie. The horror they felt goes without saying, but they managed to escape danger by working together, which increased the level of trust among the trio. William also started considering Sun's suggestion and began to study the map seriously. However, they encountered the black car once again. The three of them initially held a glimmer of hope. Perhaps the following was just a coincidence. After all, their destination was the stadium. Unfortunately, when they slowed down, the black car didn't overtake them. William only felt anger. He thought that it's bad enough that zombies were bullying them, but now even their fellow humans wanted to take advantage of them. A fast and furious chase ensued, and then, under Sun's guidance, they hid in an alley and managed to shake off the black car once again. But out of nowhere, two living people appeared and asked them for help, and a zombie was coming from behind. They definitely couldn't open the car door, or they would all be wiped out. William quickly drove the car away. On the road, the three of them exchanged names. They were now friends. Sun even started singing in the car. The cheerful melody echoed in the apocalypse, as if there were full of hope ahead. But the devil-like black car chased them again. This time, it was no longer just following, but fiercely ramming into William's car. William immediately swore and told everyone to buckle up. He then increased the speed and hit back. But while he was angrily exchanging insults with the people in the black car, neither party noticed the road conditions. The car crashed into an obstacle ahead at high speed. 
Barbara, who hadn't fastened her seatbelt, was thrown out and died on the spot, later turning into a sexy zombie. The driver of the black car also died instantly and turned into a zombie. The surviving people got out of the car and ran away, quickly hiding in a nearby restaurant, leaving the zombies outside banging on the door. Seeing the people who were just laughing and talking turn into zombies, everyone felt a sense of sorrow. On the other side, Rose is desperately leading Ryan and Lance. The four of them wander aimlessly through the streets. They notice a woman and a child inside a car on their way. Rose intends to help them, but the woman is holding a gun. Approaching her carelessly would be risking their lives. Nearby, a zombie is hunting for food. Once a person is bitten, they instantly become one of them. The group can't afford to linger and continues to press forward. Before long, they stumble upon the car again. However, the driver has changed. Two burly men have taken the car and it's likely they killed the woman. The woman's child is still in the car. In the midst of a disaster, the elderly and children are usually the first to be abandoned because they could potentially slow everyone down. With the woman now killed and the child left behind, the child's fate might be even more painful than becoming a zombie. Due to the widespread outbreak of the zombie virus in the United States, the small town where Rose is located has been designated as a mandatory quarantine zone by the army, which then begins to bomb the zombies. Survivors will be escorted by the military to a safe zone, a city center stadium. However, there are always virus-infected individuals who hide their condition and try to blend into the crowd, causing panic. The military dare not escort too many people and immediately leave as soon as an undercover infected individual is found. The rest of the survivors are abandoned by the military and must find their own way. Rose is one of them. While being chased by her zombie husband, Rose is coincidentally saved by a convict, Spears. The two of them, along with Lance and Ryan, form a team to survive. They sought refuge and ended up hiding in a large building. The building is very large and quiet inside. Spears, worried about a zombie ambush, takes the lead in scouting the area with a gun. It seems safe and the residents appear to have evacuated long ago. No one has come to loot. They find some medicine and bedding, planning to rest there for the night. Ryan and Lance are a bit bold and try to play some music on an instrument in the room, almost causing Spears to lose his temper. Such noise could attract zombies and get everyone killed. Luckily, Rose manages to calm everyone down and prevent any infighting, but Lance and Ryan clearly lack vigilance. They get the bedding and go to sleep. Spears and Rose move a chair to the door to keep watch and nap. Just as they close their eyes, they hear footsteps from upstairs. Spears instructs Rose to quickly wake Lance and Ryan. Armed with a gun, they go upstairs to check. It turns out to be a little boy survivor. The little boy immediately runs away upon seeing them. Ryan thinks they should take him along and chases in the direction the boy ran. But they are not familiar with the building and run in circles without finding the boy. Spears thinks they shouldn't stay here for long. There must be other survivors, and in these wicked times the boy, seemingly alone, could be bait. If they recklessly chase him and fall into a trap, it would be disastrous. Rose comes up with a compromise. They split into two teams and start searching from this floor downwards. If they find the boy along the way, they take him. If not, they leave immediately. Spears accepts this plan and thus begins a game of search and rescue. Ryan and Rose formed a team. When they entered the changing room of a gym, they were struck by a foul smell. At first, they couldn't identify the source of the odor until they saw a few bodies lying in the innermost bathroom. As office workers prior to this, neither of them had ever witnessed such a gruesome scene. Ryan quickly ran out and Rose followed suit, nauseated to the point of vomiting. By the time she went to find Ryan, he was long gone. Suddenly, a cry for help from the little boy echoed from a room. They followed the sound only to find a loudspeaker in the bathroom. The boy's plea for help was a recording. Realizing they had been tricked, Rose tried to flee, but the door was blocked from the outside. The loudspeaker played the boy's derisive laughter. No matter how much she pleaded, no one came to open the door. Meanwhile, Spears and Lance returned to the room where they had previously rested. Upon entering, Spears noticed that the medical supplies they had collected were missing, indicating other people were also in the building. They rushed to the exit on the first floor, only to find it locked. It was clear someone was playing them. Spears frantically searched for a key, but found nothing at the service desk or in the key cabinet. Lance tripped over a wire while running with his heavy body and fell in the hallway, losing consciousness. The door to the hallway immediately locked, leaving Spears unable to rescue Lance. Ryan, now alone, encountered the boy again. He wanted to make peace with the boy, but was suddenly surrounded by five or six teenagers, guns pointed at his head. 
Before he could comprehend the situation, he was blindfolded, his hands tied, and was taken to the children's hideout, where another man was already tied up. Unable to help Lance, Spears had to find others. He discovered Rose trapped in a room. As they were considering how to reveal the person behind all this, they heard a gunshot. In the adjacent hallway, they encountered a group of children who threatened Spears with Ryan's life to hand over his gun. Seeing that the children only had one gun, Spears thought he had a fighting chance, but the teens handed the gun to a child. Rose persuaded Spears to exchange the gun for the hostage, but the moment she put down the gun, the child suddenly shot Ryan dead. They quickly took cover, and Ryan quickly turned into an emotionless zombie, chasing after Rose and Spears. Although Spears picked up the gun, he didn't know the zombie's weakness and could only try to escape with Rose. Meanwhile, those children were watching and cheering from behind a fence. In the nick of time, Rose and Spears ran towards the exit. The old man guarding the door opened it for them. As they fled, the three managed to close the door. Then a gunshot sounded from inside, and Ryan's roaring ceased, presumably silenced by the children. After the old doorman helped them escape, one of the children opened the door and placed a piece of wood in the gap, waiting for new survivors to fall into their trap. When Lance regained consciousness, he found himself alone. Being timid, he initially thought to hide alone in the library of the building. He even picked a holy book to bolster his courage. However, weird noises kept coming from downstairs, causing him to hide fearfully under the table. Eventually, he realized that it wasn't a solution and decided he must leave this haunted place. He ran to the rooftop, assessed the distance to the ground, and decided to descend via the external pipes. Fortunately, he wasn't spotted by the patrolling drones and didn't get injured while jumping down. Just as he thought he was about to escape, the mischievous children in the building threw out another body, the other man who had been tied up earlier, who was now a zombie. Lance broke into a run so fast that he ended up with a cramp. Fortunately, he managed to shake off the zombie and hurried to seek help from nearby residents. But all the houses were empty, their doors locked. He found a car and its keys, but no matter what, he couldn't get it to start. He was once again at a loss. On his way, he encountered a shepherd. He tried to call it over for company, but the dog ignored his smelly bullshit. However, judging by the dog's fur, it seemed well cared for, not a stray. At that moment, Lance discovered a supermarket next door. The doors were automatic and the shop hadn't been looted. The shelves were full of goods and he was overjoyed. He pushed a shopping cart around, picking out goods, even pretending to pay at the cash register. But as he was looking for a can opener, he heard the supermarket's welcome bell ring. The zombie had walked in. He quickly looked for a chance to escape and was chased by the zombie for two blocks, eventually climbing onto the roof of a school bus. The zombie had locked onto him as a greasy food source and squatted down below, refusing to leave. Lance had no choice but to lie on the roof of the bus, looking at the blue sky and fluffy clouds, falling asleep. When he woke up again, he could only hear the chirping of birds. There were no signs of the zombie in sight. Thinking he was safe, he looked towards the back of the bus, only to see the zombie still waiting down below. To avoid startling it, he carefully climbed down from the front of the bus. However, as soon as he stepped on the wheel, the zombie started chasing him again and even climbed onto the bus roof. Lance made a snap decision and jumped forward, falling into an old car. He quickly entered a nearby garage. The garage door wasn't fully closed, and the zombie crawled in from underneath. Lance wanted to leave via the garage's back door, but he couldn't find the key. He picked up a window-breaking axe, planning to sneak attack the zombie. But when he sneaked up behind the zombie, he was discovered by it, leading to another fast and furious chase. They ended up back in the supermarket, playing a game of cat and mouse. Just when he gave away his position, a gunshot suddenly rang out from outside. An old man had shot and killed the zombie. However, during the fight, the old man had been bitten on the shoulder by the zombie. Lance made a crucial decision. Taking advantage of the old man's inattention, he swung a large rock towards the man who had saved his chubby life. On the other side, Son and William were trapped in a countryside restaurant. The two initially tried to escape through the back door, only to find that the zombies outside were lured by their scent. They had no choice but to retreat back to the restaurant. The other people in the restaurant remained indifferent, sitting at their tables. No one dared to venture out, but fortunately, there was plenty of food inside. A couple, after eating their fill, found time to flirt. A lone guy named Phil, laughing while holding a can of food, seemed friendly but had his own agenda. Phil noticed that William was physically strong, so he pulled him aside for a private conversation. Phil claimed that he didn't kill his teammate Barbara. It was the zombie outside. 
Now, he and William needed to work together to devise an escape plan and take refuge in the stadium and reunite with their families. William, being a simple and honest man, agreed and asked what the plan was. Phil proposed to separate the capable from the burdened. He thought Sun was a liability, particularly because of her poor English, making her the first candidate to be left behind. William, although he had only met Sun by chance, considered her a friend. He hesitated at Phil's suggestion. Phil then played his trump card, claiming that there were many zombies on the way to the city center and they needed strong firepower to clear the way. What's more, he knew a place where they could steal weapons, but it's too dangerous to take everyone, so they needed to make a choice. Meanwhile, Sun, who was chatting with the couple, also heard about the weapons and the outpost. Worried that she might be left behind, she quietly filled a bag with canned food. There were still two zombies outside, relentlessly hitting the glass window. If they didn't act soon, the window would eventually break. William thought they couldn't just wait to be devoured, saying that with five people here, they could definitely outnumber the two zombies outside. Phil agreed and came up with a plan. He suggested that Sun should attract the zombies' attention by knocking on the window from the inside. The rest of them would use kitchen utensils as weapons, aim for the zombies' knees to slow them down, and then try to subdue them. Sun, not understanding their discussion, was trembling, clutching her bag of cans and thinking she was going to be sacrificed. But when Phil came over and gestured to her, he meant for her to stay inside. Relieved, she started knocking on the glass as the others exited the building from different entrances. As she drew the zombies' attention, the others ambushed them from behind. But they were so weak that they almost got killed until Sun opened the door to let them back in. After the fight, the group was somewhat despondent. Carmen, the girl from the couple, pointed out that Phil hadn't targeted the zombies' knees as planned, blaming him for their near failure. Tensions rose among the group, with everyone bickering and blaming each other. Yet they still needed to figure out a plan. Phil suggested that the zombies were hungry and could be distracted by food. But the problem was that the food zombies craved was living humans. He implied that one of them would have to be sacrificed, but did not say who. He then took the couple aside for a private discussion and after that had a whispered conversation with William. William saw through Phil's intentions and refused to sacrifice Son. When Phil proposed a duel to decide who should live and who should die, the group divided into two sides preparing for a fight but nobody dared to make the first move. Sun, however, was eager to solve the problem rather than participate in a quarrel. She noticed a wound on Phil's arm and gestured to William, who also realized the severity of the situation. Phil quickly explained that he had just bumped into something, leading to his injury. He guiltily pulled his sleeve down to cover the wound and tried to discredit Sun, claiming she was lying. However, the couple feared zombies even more. So when Phil was focused on attacking William, they took the opportunity to knock him out. The others quickly stepped in to finish him off. After Rose, Spears, and the doorman managed to escape the building, the trio decided to walk from the suburbs to the city center to avoid being chased by zombies. However, they had no food or water, and they were both hungry and exhausted. In her weakened state, Rose even started hallucinating, seeing her daughter leading the way in front of her. Spears was gradually feeling exhausted as well, so much so that he even threw away his gun and just wanted to sit down and rest. It was then that the doorman noticed a restaurant ahead, the very place where Sun and the others were trapped. They ran towards it, but before they could get close, two zombies sprang out. Fortunately, the zombies didn't notice them and were still searching for an entrance around the restaurant. Spears only had two bullets left in his gun, and he wasn't a great shot. If they were to deal with the zombies without being noticed, they would have to approach slowly from behind. However, these zombies wouldn't stay in one place as noises from the restaurant would draw them in. Spears thought it over and decided that waiting for the zombies to stay still wouldn't work. It would be better to wait until the zombies were far away. Then the three of them could rush to the restaurant entrance and go straight in. But just as they were preparing to act, the restaurant door suddenly opened. Phil was being carried out, screaming like a chicken. He didn't have time to escape and was quickly knocked down by a zombie. Spears acted quickly, killing the zombie, but his second bullet missed the male zombie, hitting him only in the abdomen. This only enraged the zombie even more. The others quickly came out to help, not only killing the zombie, but also smashing the mutating Phil. Finally, the main group was all together. Under Rose's leadership, they picked up some food and left the restaurant, planning to steal weapons from the lookout post. When the group arrived at the lookout post, they were spotted by the army on watch. Seeing that they were alive, the two brothers didn't take them seriously. 
The couple took Rose to ring the doorbell of the lookout post, pointing to the two ladies next to them and asking the surveillance camera if they needed this. The officer watching the surveillance immediately let them in and thoroughly searched them. He then led them underground where, unlike the outside, there was strength, food, and no legal restrictions. Life was extremely luxurious. Rose was placed in a room full of ordinary people who had come for help, including the barely alive Lance. Lance recognized Rose immediately, and when the officer came back to the sexy Rose intending to have a smelly exercise with her, Lance quickly intervened. However, the officer didn't know that a conspiracy was unfolding outside. The couple, Carmen and her boyfriend, were supposed to meet the boss of the lookout post. However, when no one was paying attention, they secretly opened the back door of the post and let the other three in. The boyfriend led Spears and Son to the weapon storage point, knocked out the guard, and filled three bags with weapons. They then secretly transported these weapons to the ventilation duct, where Son and Carmen's boyfriend crawled forward with the weapons, while Spears prepared to support the others. During this time, William followed Carmen and they moved through the crowd, filled with glitz and glamour. They secretly sneaked into the powerhouse where William turned off all the switches, plunging the outside into darkness. In the dark, Carmen killed someone who instantly mutated into a zombie. Chaos ensued, and the once impregnable outpost turned into a living hell. Rose and Lance managed to escape, while the doorman outside took the opportunity to block an exit. Spears found a soldier's key, but instead of waiting for his companions, he was chased by a zombie and fled. He blocked the door with a table from outside and then hurried towards the ventilation duct. A package filled with weapons was thrown nearby. From inside the duct, Sun's cries for help could be heard. It turned out that during the weapon transportation, Carmen's boyfriend was unfortunately hit by a stray bullet. He unexpectedly turned into a zombie and attacked Sun. Just when he was about to feast on Sun, Spears shot him in the forehead, ending his life. But the weapons that were supposed to be transported by him stayed in the duct. The living fled the outpost in fear, with Rose's team regrouping at a designated location. Before they could distribute the weapons, zombies suddenly invaded their lookout. Gunfire ensued, and two soldiers managed to kill the zombies. These two were the same ones stationed on the top of the outpost. They had a strange reaction upon seeing Spears, recognizing his uniform but puzzled to see it on him. Pretending not to notice, they suggested a safe route through a warehouse, leading to the edge of the city center. Walking through a zombie-infested path would lead them to the stadium. They offered to guide Rose's team, who were worried about navigating a safe route, and followed them instead. They reached a public restaurant cautiously. Considering it was night and there were no zombies around, they thought it seemed like a safe place. The soldiers suggested that Rose's team should sleep there. Rose asked why they shouldn't keep moving, and the soldiers gave an irresistible reason. It turned out in the next four hours, airborne troops would be cleaning the streets. It wouldn't be safe outside until they were done. After this, they would guide Rose's team through the second block, and if all went well, they should reach the stadium by the next morning. The stadium was not the final destination. After 18 hours, the first batch of refugees there would be evacuated, with subsequent evacuations every hour. This meant they had ample time to rest. This information, however, was classified and not available to the public. The first area infected by the virus was Denver, which became a zone filled with zombies in just three days. Then all 48 states in the United States fell, leaving no safe places. The reality left everyone in despair, but they had no choice but to face it. They agreed to the soldier's suggestion and decided to sleep in the restaurant. Spears, however, was on high alert. In order not to arouse suspicion, he lied that his team had died fighting zombies, leaving him the only survivor. In the middle of the night, a strange noise was heard outside. Rose woke up in alarm and called out for Spears. When she shone her flashlight around, Spears was nowhere to be found. She decided to investigate the source of the noise and found a zombie struggling under heavy equipment. She went outside in search of help and stumbled upon a passageway. Spears was being escorted by two soldiers. They explained to a puzzled Rose that Spears was not a soldier, but a criminal who killed one of their squad members and stole a uniform. They were now going to punish him. Spears quickly defended himself, saying that there was no law in this world anymore. They captured him because he knew a secret. Rose, however, didn't care about the reasons. She was just a mother wanting to reach the stadium to reunite with her daughter. Faced with the soldiers and Spears who had protected her all along, she decided to pull the trigger and killed the soldiers. Luckily, they were not infected and didn't turn into zombies. 
The next morning, the team divided the ammunition and guns, wondering where the soldiers had gone. Rose lied, saying they had left. She then led her team out of the restaurant. The doorman did not join them. He called his dog, and together they left in the opposite direction. The dog was the same one Lance saw when he was chased by zombies. It must be the doorman's dog. He wasn't just an ordinary person and probably had some powerful force backing him. But Rose and her team no longer had time to consider this. As daylight broke, all the survivors took to the streets. Those who had lived to this point held weapons in their hands, attempting to carve a path to survival in the final zombie stronghold. However, they were just ordinary people who only knew how to indiscriminately spray bullets, accidentally injuring their comrades in the process. Carmen was fatally wounded by friendly fire and instantly turned from a living human into a sexy zombie. Chaos erupted amongst the crowd, and the team was forced to split up and escape. Along the way, Sun also accidentally injured someone, and fearing they might turn into a zombie, she had no choice but to finish them off. William was injured in the leg. Although it wasn't fatal, it slowed him down. During an airstrike, he was severely wounded. Lance, not agile due to his body weight, had his weapon stolen while trying to escape, and he himself became a target for a horde of zombies. As a result, he ran in the wrong direction in order to survive, failing to make it to the stadium. Meanwhile, Rose intended to bring William with her, but he was already showing signs of mutation. She had no choice but to kill him with a shot to the head. In the end, only Rose, Spears, and Sun managed to escape successfully. Amidst the furious howling of a crowd of zombies, they entered the legendary refuge, the downtown stadium. There were no zombies or gunfire here, and the vast stadium was eerily empty. It seemed that the military had retreated. Season one of this drama ends with the trio being bewildered while a child came down the stairs from the other side. It was Rose's daughter, accompanied by a man in a plaid shirt who didn't look like he was part of the U.S. Army. The final battle was realistic, because civilians who haven't received training are very likely to accidentally shoot others when they're nervous, making the situation even more chaotic. In such extreme survival conditions, the zombies were no longer the focus. The real focus was on the choices humans make when facing a desperate situation and the ensuing conflicts. Rose, at first, didn't want to abandon her infected husband, but in the end she was willing to take up arms, lead the charge, and didn't hesitate to kill William who was about to mutate. Her transformation, or perhaps darkening, undoubtedly demonstrated the speed at which human nature can change. In an apocalyptic world where the government has collapsed, the law is ineffective and crises abound. Those who survive are never purely good people. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.